Hey, this is Rick, and welcome to Warrior's Respite. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about why we defend our narcissistic parents. I'm a veteran social worker, therapist, and a uh, yoga and meditation coach. First of all, I think it's important to understand what a narcissist is. Now, when I'm talking about a narcissist, it's got a bad connotation. A narcissist, we don't have to demonize the word narcissist. A narcissist doesn't necessarily automatically mean bad, especially when we're talking about your parents. In fact, narcissism generally means trauma. Narcissist really means somebody who doesn't want to look at their vulnerabilities and really thinks low of themselves. So if somebody is a narcissist, they do not want to see their flaws. And if you were to expose their flaws, well, that's the end of the world for them. So how do you know if your parent is a narcissist? How do you know if your spouse is a narcissist? How do you know if you're around a narcissist? I got a checklist here of narcissism, especially if your parent's a narcissist. And I myself was kind of raised by three narcissists. Took me 40 years. And just FYI, being a child of a narcissist can cause complex PTSD. So if your parent is a narcissist, they might always divert the discussion to themselves. If you go to them for advice, they're always bringing the discussion to themselves. They might try to top your feelings with their own. So their feelings might be more important than yours. They might act jealous of you. They might act jealous of your spouse. They might act jealous of your child. I know my mom, every time I brought a girlfriend home, she was jealous of a girlfriend. It was quite awkward. They might lack empathy. Ask yourself, you know, do they have empathy? They might be able to muster up some empathy, but they might not be able to hold the empathy or have empathy for a large amount of time. They might only support those things you do that reflect on themselves as a good mother. So they might only be interested in what you do only if it makes them look good. Appearances are what's important. It's only important if it makes them look good. The family's got to look good. There might be a lack of emotional closeness. You might have gone your whole life thinking that you're close to your parent, only not realizing that there is no closeness. The closeness was trauma bonding or love bombing. So they buy you a bunch of stuff and they call that love. Or they might do certain things that they have justified as good. But it's only in their head that it's good. They might have you consistently questioning whether or not your parent loves you or likes you. And they might only do things for you when others can see. it. Again, it might be about what other people see. When th- something happens in your life, like an accident or divorce, does your parent react with how it will affect them rather than how you feel? Is your mom overly conscious of what others and does your mother or father deny their own feelings they don't allow themselves to feel and they might not allow you to feel they deny your feelings that's an important thing you're not allowed to feel angry you're not allowed to feel sad you're not allowed to feel anxious that's an important thing does your parent hold a grudge and for a long time and not resolve it or do you feel like a slave often or do you feel responsible for their ailments or sickness one thing i look at is do you feel that you don't have an identity do they make you feel like you don't have an identity because they try to make you like them so 
you have to follow in their footsteps and you're overly criticized. So these are important things to look at. So why do we defend this? Well, I think number one is our parents might make us feel guilty because what might happen is what your mother might do, manipulate you emotionally. I carried you around in the womb for nine months and then I fed you and I bathed you and look at all that I've given you. A narcissist will do anything to hold things over your head. I paid for your car. Here's the thing. Narcissists create reliance. They like to be taken care of. They do. Some of them like to be sick because they want you to take care of them. But they want you to owe them. They want you to feel bad. So they'll do things for you and then make you feel bad. And it's hard because when you're a child, because you were raised in this environment, you're raised in this environment and taught to be dependent and you got to learn on your own to be independent i joined the military and here's the thing your parents will like completely avoid you as a narcissist so you will get into a sink or swim thing because they'll create dependency but at the same time they will completely neglect you because they're so self-centered so i'd suggest not taking anything from your parents because they will hold it against you do not take anything from your parents ever don't rely on your parents when you're an adult and take the oh well i did everything for you as a child no you're supposed to then we have trauma bonding a person forms a deep emotional attachment with someone that causes them harm it's a psychological response to a cycle of abuse or trauma that alternates between positive reinforcement and physical or emotional abuse. So a lot of times in romantic relationships, but it can happen in, I think, in uh, parenting, low self-esteem, depression, perpetuating abuse cycles, where you feel like you are responsible for your parent due to the trauma, the trauma involved. You've been spending your whole life being gaslit and manipulated as a child of a narcissist. And I always tell people, I'd rather get my ass kicked growing up than being gaslit. Because at least if I get my ass kicked, I know what's happening to me. Because if I'm getting gaslit, I have no idea what's happening to me. It's nonstop. And people think... Well, I'm not as bad. My trauma is not as bad as other people. Well, hell yeah, it is. You've been spending every second of your life being emotionally manipulated. You've been spending every second of your life being emotionally tortured. And you're trying to justify it. And I get it. Because you're trying to tell yourself it's not as bad as other people. But it is. And it takes intensive therapy from a qualified therapist. A qualified therapist that knows what they're doing. Because not all therapists or mental health providers knows how to deal with a child of complex trauma. Of narcissism. Of gaslighting and emotional manipulation. Because I'll see people that go from therapist to therapist and not understanding what is wrong with them. That's the thing. If you're trying having a hard time with your identity, you're probably a child of personality disorder. And this thing runs in the family because you might not be just be manipulated by the parent. There's grandparents, aunts, uncles, and your siblings are being affected by it. And your siblings are being a, played specific roles and being affected differently because they are all being treated differently because the parents see each and every one of them differently because one child will have high expectations one child will take the brunt of everybody's anger one child will be forgotten about every child will be different this will cause complex child or complex trauma which each and everybody each and every one and it'll cause uh 
anxious attachment and it'll affect how you interact with people in general and it can cause you to withdraw from people it causes anger constant traumatic responses meaning your central nervous system is going off all the time you're always walking on eggshells because you've always had to watch your parents emotions you've always had to be careful of your parents emotions and so that was useful when you were a child having to watch your parents emotions but when you grow up and you leave the house, you don't need to watch their emotions all the time. You go to work and you're thinking, oh, uh, I need to know I'm doing a good job. I need praise all the time. I need, I need somebody to tell me I'm doing a good job. That central nervous system still going off all the time because you're afraid you're going to get criticized. You're afraid you're going to get fired because you got criticized growing up all the time. Because you got gaslit growing up all the time. Then maybe you'll get a boss that's a narcissist. And then you'll get re-triggered all over again. And you never know because you never knew your parent was a narcissist. Maybe you have narcissistic traits. Doesn't mean you're a full-on narcissist either. See, there's narcissistic personality disorder that's in the DSM. But doesn't mean you're a full-on narcissistic personality disorder. It's a spectrum. So you could have traits, but you might, and I, I have had traits, I probably still do, but I've worked and it is something you could work on. You might like put yourself at a level of other people or like be angry that you're not as important as you wish you were or put other people down and over hyper criticize other people and then like wonder like, why do I keep doing this? And then like the fact of the matter is you, you might not be a narcissist because or not might not have narcissistic personality disorder because you're like i'm feeling bad about this why do i keep doing this because if you're feeling bad about this you have empathy that means you don't have narcissistic personality disorder that means like you have narcissistic traits you have a chance to heal everybody has a chance to heal okay and then usually with these personality disorders see i've worked in prisons i've worked in criminal justice system uh, I've worked with personality disorders in general, in hospitals, in my private practice, in rehabs. There's criminal thinking errors that go with this. Everybody has criminal thinking errors. Let's just get that right off the bat. But a lot of people, most people in prison have personality disorders. Mostly antisocial is the big one, but a lot of narcissism, a lot of borderline personality disorder. But there is criminal thinking errors that go with this one. Okay, so... There's mollification. These are things to look out for, especially if you are with a narcissist. And I tend to see people who are children of narcissists end up marrying narcissists. Must be some kind of psychological thing. You know, you marry people that you're, you're drawn to people that you're used to, right? So there's mollification and people who have the thinking disorder of mollification, they tend to blame or justify their action. So like, if you didn't do that, then I wouldn't have done it. It's your fault that I did this. If you wouldn't have been such a bitch, I wouldn't have hit you. So they justify their domestic violence. Entitlement. Entitlement is definitely one that narcissists have, right? A sense of superiority. It's just, it's just a sense of importance. I'm entitled to things. And I get angry when things aren't my way. I'm entitled to it. I'm more important than other people. That's why criminals take things. I have been down all these years. I deserve this. I don't need to work my way up. It's mine. Then there's cutoff. That's where you get the screw it or the fuck it. Fuck it. I'm robbing that bank. Screw it. Whatever. Because once you say those words... Yeah, cut off any emotion. And then there's sentimentality. And sentimentality is when you think you're doing it because it's for a good reason. I feel like I'm selling drugs because I'm a good person. Because I'm the government's evil, you know. I'm, I'm doing God's work. You steal bread to feed your family. I did it for a moral reason in my eyes. And then there is super optimism. So there's optimism where you're looking at the positives. But then there's super optimism. And super optimism basically means it's never going to happen to me. I'm never going to get caught. I had this friend 
who used to really tail people in the car. Like, really get on their ass. It scared the crap out of me. I was like, you need to stop this. He was like, no, nothing will ever happen. I never drove with him again. Then he got into a car wreck. I've had people say uh, they'll never get lung cancer from cigarettes. I don't know if they never got lung cancer, but they're super optimistic about it. Then my favorite word, cognitive indolence. I don't know. Cognitive indolence. We engage in lazy thinking. I'll do it tomorrow. Discontinuity is where you were gonna do it, but then I got I started smoking weed instead. Now here's power orientation. This is the worst one here. There are two types of people in the world, the weak and the strong. And this is the one where they're the abusive type. Where your parents are abusive or your spouse is abusive. They feel like they can push you around or physically abuse you and intimidate you. I'm not going to make any political statements here. But I'd have something to protect myself. Anyways, they are going to continue to push you around. And you stick with them. And people say, why do you stick with them? Trauma bonding. That's one. There might be a lot of reasons. Maybe the the promise that they are going to get better. You thought that they were going to get better because of that love bombing. You've witnessed the good times, and now you're waiting for those good times to come back. And they promised they were going to get better. Narcissists are manipulative, and they'll make you feel bad. They'll get in your feelings. They'll make you feel bad. They'll make you feel guilty. You got to see past that. You got to get educated. You got to see past that. But if you're not educated, you won't. Can they get better? Anybody can get better. But it's not up to you to wait for them to get better. And it's not up to you to make them get better. You're not responsible for them. They're responsible for themselves. They will make you feel like you're responsible for them. You're not. I know you got children involved. You got money at stake. And here's the thing, too. It gets difficult, especially if you got money and housing. and Because they hold all that stuff against you. And then you, you, you get afraid of all that stuff. So it gets complicated. That's why I say get a therapist that specializes in narcissism abuse. Get a lawyer that specializes in narcissism abuse. And I know money is a big factor too. And there's narcissist cultures out there. Books continue with the podcast. But change the way you're seeing this. Change the way you're looking at this. Sometimes... There might be, have to be some ego stroking to get through some things. Sometimes if you're going to get out of the house, like if you're in a domestic violence situation, you might have to do some ego stroking to get out of that situation until that person leaves to sneak out of the house for safety. That might need to happen. Well, thanks for listening. You can find me on TikTok, YouTube, Warriors Respite. I have a Warrior's Respite a meditation channel. And don't forget to check out www.warriorsrespitetherapy.com. And don't forget to find me for meditation and yoga. And you have yourself a good rest of your day.